do want to make the point with all of you that most people have weak adrenals. When you're walking around and you're not the healthiest you could be, part of why you're not healthy is because your adrenals are weak. And I want to make the point that we rarely check for this or test it in the medical field. Why? Because we usually only test for adrenal function if we think you're going to die, like you have an adrenal cancer, tumor, or we think you've got Addison's disease where literally you're not making normal amounts of adrenal hormones, adrenal chemicals. The most famous case of Addison's disease is historical. It was actually the president, John Kennedy, back in the 60s when he was the president. He was literally living on adrenal support because he had Addison's disease he would never have been able to be a senator or the president or anything with that condition. You literally end up in the hospital and you can't make it. Millions of people are walking around with weak adrenals, but we just don't diagnose it or test it in the medical field because you know we wait until we think you're seriously ill. But you could be going from being incredibly strong and healthy towards extreme adrenal illness. And while you're on that path, millions of people have relative adrenal adrenal weakness and we never test you for it in the field. I remember um, I was doing one of our healing events and a woman raised her hand and she said she had gone to five different doctors asking them to test for adrenal health and she said every one of them turned her down. Now you can go to alternative labs and you can get adrenal testing but it's not going to be through your traditional clinics, your traditional medical schools very much unless again we think you're super sick. Just be aware that you can get it evaluated but you either have to go to an integrative medical doctor, naturopath, that sort of thing, a naturopathic doctor to get this evaluated the way you might want. To. But just know that most people walking around don't have great adrenal health because the adrenal cortisol and you know stress affecting cortisol levels. But just know the adrenals are so multifunctional that they affect your immunity, which means cancer and infectious diseases and allergies. The adrenals um, affect inflammation, which we see so commonly with illness. Most illnesses have inflammation with the adrenals affect male and female hormones. It's not just your ovaries as women that make female hormones like estrogen and progesterone, but we also begin the process in our adrenals as we make hormone precursors like female and male hormones. Um, the adrenals affect your energy production. They affect your digestion, creation of energy from food. I mean, it's just amazing. So it's really important to have healthy adrenals to combat disease and in fact not get disease. One of the women I wanted to share with you was a woman who came to me both for medical, integrative medicine, and also prayer to have healing from God. And this is a woman with rheumatoid arthritis, which is an arthritis that can cause a lot of pain and things like your wrists and your hands and knees and other parts of your body. And what you can get is swelling and then the joints get deformed. They get hot, it affects the muscles, let's say your fingers, it affects the bones, the bones can become eroded. So it can be very painful, very traumatic to have rheumatoid in your hands and your whole body, all the different places it comes. I remember once I was in a church where I was praying over the whole church, doing the whole church family, and a woman there had extremely severe rheumatoid arthritis. She had lumps and bumps in her hands and pain all over. As I was praying for her, God took all the lumps and bumps off her hands. She ends up with perfect looking, perfect functioning hands as I'm praying. This is what God can do. He can heal everything. And everybody at the church is looking and, and they're just admiring. Look what God's work is. Look what he did to her. But it can be very painful. Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and those poor little kids are having a lot of the same symptoms as the adults. It's, it's not a fun thing. This woman also had um, some food allergy symptoms. She had some intolerances to certain foods um, like wheat and dairy, which are really common ones. She didn't handle alcohol or sugar well. She had to watch what she was eating. And she also had not only the joint pain, but she had fibromyalgia, so she was having a lot of pain kind of all over the body and a lot of anxiety and worry and, and nervous tension. And so not only did I pray into her joints and her muscles for healing and into her brain to balance her brain chemistry so she was more peaceful and calm and full of God's love and not so hyperactive and worried. And God also healed her, her inflammations because 
because these are inflammatory diseases and he just took away all this excess inflammation so it was really positive on the other hand though i was recommending things she could do naturally to take down inflammation and it's so common and if any of you have back aches or sore wrists or sore elbows sore fingers sore feet from tendonitis or um, Achilles tendonitis, sore knees, a low back. It can be very helpful not just to take prescription drugs like a prednisone or over-the-counter anti-inflammatories, but use natural things too, and there's a lot of them. Like one great natural remedy is, a couple of them are turmeric and ginger, which you can take in capsules or you can make into teas. They're very helpful as natural anti-inflammatories. People find a great deal of benefit. And ginger is delicious. I'm sure you've all had ginger in Indian cooking and curries and, you know, Chinese food and, you know, kind of regular American food. Um, it's a very widely used herb and it makes a very good tea. And again, it's very therapeutic for inflammation as is tumor. You can also take substances like digestive enzymes. Now, digestive enzymes are made by the pancreas. They're made in the small intestine. And they're very important for regulating healthy digestion. But what a lot of people don't know is that these enzymes are also recirculated, recycled throughout the whole body. And wherever you have inflammation, these can be very helpful. And there's a lot of research on this. They're used for sports um, medicine, trauma and injury, and everything from skiing accidents to uh, football injuries, to boxing, wrestling, it's amazing. Um, they can be used to help you heal from surgery quicker, dental surgery. They're useful for um, autoimmune diseases, heart disease, it's, it's amazing. You can get like a broad-based enzyme. And one of my favorite that I found really helpful with my patients is one called Megazyme. And a lot of uh, patients um, that I work with when I was just doing my medical practice found it very helpful. Another one that comes from the pineapple stem is called bromelain. And if you want to use these for digestion, you take them with your food if you want to digest food better. If you want to use them for sore hips or back because you fell down and you had an accident, or just you have these chronic inflammatory issues like rheumatoid or fibromyalgia or eczema of the skin or psoriasis, lupus, multiple sclerosis, food allergies, asthma, these things, there are so many of these inflammatory autoimmune conditions that these just natural things like healthy diet and natural anti-inflammatories can be very helpful apart from any medication that you might be taking. So just be aware of that. If you want to use it for inflammation, then you take it between meals, not with meals. You take it two or three times a day between your meals. And if you want it for digestion, which of course is one of the big reasons God created these, you take it at that time. Also wanted you to know that for adrenal health, vitamin C and vitamin B5, panathenic acid, are also supplements that we use to boost the health of our adrenals, like 250 or 500 milligrams of panthenic acid with a B50 complex in your multi, um, vitamin C, maybe one gram, two or three grams in divided doses. These are all very helpful for your energy, your strength, your immunity, and also healthy adrenals. I just wanted to mention these things because they're things that you can do. I always recommend with vitamins that you start at a very low dose and make sure you tolerate it. Don't start with a big, huge dose and get side effects because you don't tolerate it. Start with a little teeny dose. And if you feel good on the teeny dose, then you can increase your dose and you know you can do it safely. I'm always very careful with that with people, never to overwhelm their systems with too much. We want to get it just right and have you on the right things. Another thing that I see people struggling with a lot is poor sleep. And when I'm in the churches, I'll often ask everybody there, how do people need better sleep? How many of you need better sleep? And almost every hand goes up. I look at the few people where the hand isn't up and I say, wow, you're blessed. Because um, so much of the time, people really need better sleep than they're getting at night. A lot of people have trouble falling asleep. They may have nightmares and bad dreams. They might wake up in the middle of the night and they're startled and they're too awake 
and their minds are too active. And a lot of times people end up running to the bathroom after urinate. They might go two, three, four times in a night. You don't get enough sleep. You wake up in the morning and you're tired. You don't feel as good as you should. So there's a lot of things you can do for sleep. One thing, of course, is just your habits which is don't keep your mind going all it's sleep time. It's not time to think about what you have to do at work tomorrow or some problem you're having with your boss where you're endlessly, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do with my boss? We're not getting along. The sleep time is not the time to think of those things or you're having family issues or you're worried about your health, whatever it is, shut that off an hour or two before you go to bed keep your room nice and don't have all the lights on it's nice to dim the lights have dark don't be super active with your mind don't think of all your problems don't be at the computer for hours all over rev don't be watching a lot of active movies like chase movies kung fu movies and violent movies listen to peaceful quiet music there's actually music that's been developed for people to sleep better it's peaceful music quiet music don't don't have the music on that makes you want to get up and dance till four in the morning. Don't drink a lot of caffeine before bed. It's going to overstimulate you. Don't eat a huge meal before bed. You're going to be digesting your food all night. Have a little snack, maybe some peaceful tea like chamomile or maybe a little crack or a little carbohydrate. That will quiet you down. So if you're going to have things before bed, a few hours before bed, just nice, peaceful, little quiet things. And a little bit of carbohydrate and tea before bed if you're hungry, maybe a little bit of milk because of the calcium, a little bit of magnesium. These are all things that can calm you down before bedtime. Nothing to rev you up. There's some wonderful herbs. I mentioned chamomile. That's an excellent herb. It's a sedative herb. It has kind of a serotonin-like effect. It just makes you nice and calm and peaceful. If you're having a lot of cramps, menstrual cramps or leg cramps or whatever, peppermint is a very nice tea because it's what we call antispasmodic. It releases pain, it releases muscle tension. So peppermint is a natural antispasmodic and it's very good to help you relax if you're having a lot of pain and spasm before bed. Chamomile does the same thing, it's very calming. So these are some herbs that are very peace inducing. Other things that you can do is an herb like valerian root, which is actually an herb that's had some medical studies showing that people sleep better when they take valerian root. It doesn't taste as good as a peppermint or chamomile. It's not like you're gonna wanna drink a lot of valerian root cups uh, made in water. You're gonna wanna take capsules because it just it doesn't taste good. But it's very effective for a lot of people for sleeping. There's another herb called Passiflora, which is very good for helping promote healthful sleep. Some of the products are combinations of these herbs where you might have Passiflora and Valerian root. Just be aware that these can be very helpful. Be aware also that melatonin actually is useful. Some people find it's not helpful. They may be taking too high a dose. A lot of what you buy in the stores is three milligrams. What we've seen with melatonin is you don't need that much. You can take one milligram or 1.5 milligram. You're gonna actually relax better, sleep better on a smaller dose. I know it sounds amazing, but it's just the way it works. And also know that melatonin is actually helpful for your thyroid health. Isn't isn't that interesting? It also helps your estrogen levels. So you're going to have healthier estrogen levels as a woman in midlife or older through melatonin. It's really helpful. So a lot of these things serve multiple purposes in our body. Melatonin, of course, comes from the pineal gland, which is in the brain. Again, it's very good for jet lag. It's very good for sleep. But try it at a lower dose if you're going to try it. And also know that it's good for your thyroid and your estrogen levels. Again, these are things people are never told. They they normally don't know about it. I prayed for one woman who actually was pregnant. She, this was her first pregnancy. Terrible, terrible sleep. She just wasn't doing well at all. She was, you know, waking up hype, kind of hyperactive. She's having a lot of pain. She thought she was having heart heart attack. Her doctor said no, it was muscular. It was chest pain, like in the chest wall. It wasn't her heart, but she was having a lot of trouble. And you have to be very careful with herbs and what you eat during pregnancy. So what I found with her was the best thing was prayer. And I prayed to balance her inhibitory and excitatory chemicals. She had too much excitatory. She needed to calm down. So I prayed in GABA, taurine, serotonin, tryptophan, and 5-hydroxytryptophan in her brain. And I prayed in some other chemicals as well, neuropeptides and neuroendocrine hormones from the posterior pituitary like oxytocin 
in vasopressin. And she slept like a baby. She found that she was sleeping much better. Because I was not only worried about her, I was worried about the baby not having a good start or the baby's brain is out of balance. Because the baby is going to come in off the mom. You know, the baby is bathed in whatever is going on with the mom. As moms or moms-to-be or potential moms, you want to be as best balanced as you can be during pregnancy. Careful with your diet, careful with your thinking, and in good brain balance because you'll have a healthier baby for doing that. And I love internal medicine for adults, but I also like doing pediatrics with kids. And I know the difference that healthy mindset of the mom, healthy diet and all that can making a baby where the baby sleeps well at night, baby doesn't have colic, the baby isn't having elimination problems. So the more you set up health for yourself, the more your baby's going to be healthy.